the operating total from October 25th was $38.29 for the college fund. This morning we will be lighting candles for loved ones who have died in the last year. If you have a name of someone you have not already submitted and would like to remember them, please raise your hand. We will have a short congregation meeting today following worship. November 15th has been designated as EMR Stewardship Sunday. Following the service, there will be a box lunch given by the council members. All are invited to attend. Do we have a raise of hands who plan on attending? This is what we can kind of get an estimated number. Of Yes, if you can just raise your hand so we can get an estimated count of who will be attending. Okay, thank you. Um, you're also invited to visit our updated website at www.bethelrutherinlifertexas.org. Worship services, videos, and weekly bulletins are posted there, as well as lots of photos of past events. Also, worship services can be seen on Facebook and on YouTube. And I know Paul Greenhill has a message he wanted to talk to you about, so he was going to come up here. Good morning. I just wanted to share a, a blessing and a miracle that just happened, we experienced this week. You all remember, or a lot of you know my son, Jody Greenhill, who joined this church when we joined, and his family. The children attended Sunday school, had done the Lord's, had he uh, mentored them as they grew up in this church. A couple of them were even confirmed here. But anyway, Dwayne, uh, on his way home from work, he now lives in Florida. On Thursday evening, there was a real bad wreck in front of him. So he uh, pulled off the road to avoid it, and uh, 18 wheeler hit him from the rear. Fortunately, uh, he missed the people in front of him. But anyway, his vehicle burst into, well, caught on fire. It was the beginning of it. He was trapped in the vehicle. And two very brave DPS officers, as they came upon the scene, got their fire extinguishers and tried to extinguish the fire and get him out of the vehicle. He was trapped in it and they couldn't get him out. Anyway, they made a last minute decision just to pull on him real hard. <clears throat> anyway, they got him out and uh, they ripped his arm open pretty bad when he was pulled out of the vehicle, but uh, the vehicle exploded and burst into flames. So it was only moments away from losing his life. Anyway, they airlifted him to the hospital and uh, they showed him up on the way over there. Anyway, he made it. Um, uh, it was it's a miracle in heaven sent. But um, what I'm asking you is, um, might be he's going to have some uh, major surgery done to his face. Uh, they're going to put some metal plates in, things like that. But he's not in a, a life-threatening situation right now. He's just. Um, trying to get him stabilized and take care of it. But he's having this major surgery Monday, and I'm asking you to hold him up in your prayers. Thank you. Patty, does it know? I got a phone call this morning from Joyce Lassig. Many of you have noticed I'm not here today. Um, Billy woke up this morning with a pink spot on his leg about the size of an orange or maybe a grapefruit. 
and a one area of it was tender, so they got scared, and I don't know what is what it is, but they are at the emergency room right now at Harlingen Medical. They decided they needed to have it checked out. So keep Billy in your prayers this morning as well. Anybody else?
peace of the Lord be with you all. And through the sharing of the peace, turn to your neighbor and bow or not your Thank you. 
saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak, and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Bless those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed those who are persecuted for righteousness, sake, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people reveal you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you, falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is greater than heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Word of God, word of life, this is the gospel of our Lord.
not only All Saints Sunday, but it's, this weekend is Reformation weekend, Reformation Sunday. I call this Sunday Reformation Sunday. So instead of just uh, preaching a sermon this morning based on Matthew 20, 23, 1 to 12, I thought it only be right that we say a word or two about Martin Luther, since he was the author of the, and the instigator of this great reformation that took place back in 1500. So, October the 31st, 2020, isn't just about Halloween, Dracula, and witches, this special date marks the 503rd anniversary of an event that altered the course of history throughout the world. You heard that, bang, 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 pounded the hammer of the Augustinian monk named Martin Luther as he led, as he nailed his famous indulgence, the 95 Theses uh, on the power of indulgence on the door of the Catholic Church in Wittenberg, Germany. <clears throat> in a nutshell, Luther, Luther's document condemned the widespread practice of paying money for indulgences to the Roman Catholic Church. Indulgences granted a reduction of a fine or in punishment for sins committed by family members that had preceded or preceded him at this time to get them out of purgatory. Purgatory was a sort of resting place before you either went to hell or to heaven. <clears throat> Indulgences are lies, said the German monk. God's favor is a gift, it is not for sale. Thus, the Protestant Reformation begun. The word Protestant means that a person is protesting or objecting to the same thing. You've heard a lot of in recent weeks about protest. It gives you an idea where protest came from, where this word came from. Luther was the Donald Trump of his generation. As a result of Luther's protesting movement, millions lost confidence in, in popes and priests and left the Roman church. Protestant churches such as Lutheran, Presbyterian, Baptist, Mennonite, and Methodist rose unstoppably in its wake. Catholic leaders admitted that these traditions aren't mentioned in the Bible specifically, but asserted that they came from the Holy Spirit working through God's church. Protestants didn't buy this thought. They decided to stick with scripture. In the 1500s, these issues divided Christendom. Martin Luther was born on November the 10th, 1483 in Eisenburg, Germany. He died February the 18th, 1546. He had a wife named Katharina and five children. Some famous quotes of, of uh, Luther were, you are not only responsible for what you say, also for what you do not say. You are not only responsible for anything you say, but also if you don't say it. Unquote. There is no more lovely, friendly, and charming relationship, communion, or company than a good marriage. <clears throat> and last 
last but not least, a thought-provoking Martin Luther, quote, that is still relevant today. Now listen closely. Whoever drinks beer, he is put to sleep. Whoever sleeps long does not sin. Whoever does not sin enters heaven. Therefore, let us drink beer. That's <laughs> pretty good. The sermon text this morning is entitled Speaking the Truth Truthfully. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We speak, we speak a lot. We speak about things and people. We speak about things we know about and maybe things we don't know about. Our words can touch a person. They can convey deep emotion. I love you. I hate you. I forgive you. Words are used to build up a person, to encourage him, to give hope and inspiration, or they can be used to tear down to hurt, to belittle, or to convey hate, to destroy a person's heart and soul. Sometimes we speak of others accusing them of saying something they should not have said or something we do not like. And the things we want to say, we don't say. Why does evil so easily come out of our mouths and yet so rarely that which is good? Now, long before we ever spoke a comforting word, a troubling word, or a dangerous word, the Lord God spoke to us. <clears throat> and when the Lord speaks, something happens. Faith comes through hearing God's word in church. We come to hear the word of God, the good news, the gospel. They are the words of forgiveness, promise, life, and salvation. But when life-giving words are not spoken and said as the life-giving words that they are, but are misused and mocked, they do not bring life but death. No, the Lord God does not like false teaching. He does not like people misusing his name and his word. Don't misquote it. Don't dismiss it. Don't change it. Add to it or subtract from it. Instead, hear it, read, mark, learn, and meditate on it. But do not speculate about it. Question its validity or question its applicable to life. The Lord, after all, doesn't like false teaching. The commandments <coughs> of Holy Scripture makes that clear. The mishandling of his name and his word have always been a big problem. That was always a problem for Israel. False teachers and false prophets teaching falsely. Jesus knows how contagious false teachings can be. And that is what he is warning about in the gospel reading for today from St. Matthew chapter 23. So we read again. And Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, the teachers of the law and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. So you must obey them and do everything they tell you. But do not do what they do, for they do not practice what they preach. They tie up heavy loads and put them on men's shoulders, but they are not willing to lift a single finger to move them. To be sure, the teachers of the law and Pharisees that Jesus is speaking about read the scriptures well enough. They were serious about adding who were taken away from the word of God in their teaching. Or so they thought and claimed. They turned everything they read from the Old Testament into law only. They would take those blessed words and tie up heavy loads and put them on men's shoulders. <clears throat> Loading people down with rules and regulations on every aspect of life to the littlest of things. There was no promise, no grace, 
no compassion, no love of God for the sinful, no forgiveness and life in their teaching. Instead, life became a burden, a heavy load of wool. And yet, as Christ, as Jesus says, they themselves are not willing to lift the finger to move them, to help ease the load and remove the burden, perverting and distorting the law of God for his own self-righteous purposes. No, that was all about them. For Jesus then proceeds to address the disciples. That means Jesus also talking to you as well. But you are not to be called a rabbi, for you have only one master, and you are all brothers. And do not call anyone on earth father, for you have a father and he is in heaven. Nor are you to be called teacher, for you have one teacher, Jesus Christ. The greatest among you shall be your servant. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. The issue is not the name, but anyone claiming for themselves an authority not given. And even worse, who set aside our true teacher, Jesus. For all of us are to sit at Jesus' feet. He alone is the way. We are to listen to and to obey God. And anyone, no matter how great and wonderful he or she may be, or how great, or how gifted they are at teaching and public speaking, if they speak on behalf of God, a word that differs from God's word, then they are to be silenced because what they are doing, what they are really doing by their speaking is silencing God himself. The moment of these teachers the moment one of these teachers, fathers, leaders, departs from our Heavenly Father, uh, Heavenly Father's word, and falls in error, he is going beyond his authority and place. No one in the church has authority to make us do anything that is out of harmony with the word of our Heavenly Father. For he alone is the one and the only Father over us all. What a difficult read. And yet, what a necessary reading. For Jesus is so warned the people, the church, you and me, about the Word of God, that, there's, that there be faithful preaching and teaching, doctrine and life, that forgiveness and salvation and justification <coughs> by grace, through faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, be at heart and center of the preach and taught word. False teaching is all around us. It always has been and always will be. There will always be false teachers taking the good news of God's love and it will continue until the end of time when Jesus comes back and puts a stop to it. The warning from Jesus is still valid for every teacher and every listener. <clears throat> Now you've heard the warning. Thanks be to God for all the faithful pastors, teachers, fathers, and mothers <coughs> who spoke and taught only the word of our Heavenly Father, the Holy Spirit, the word of forgiveness, salvation, and life eternal. All saints day and the day to remember those who died in true faith, and also remembrance day about those who died on the field of battle. <coughs> How we hope, how we hope in vain that there should never be a war again. But thanks be to God for his word of truth, that even in the most desperate times and places, we have a Savior, <coughs> his dear Son, a Savior who went to the cross in your place to pay for all your sin, even though sins of doubt and speculation and listening at times to those who speak falsely about his word. Thanks be to God who has promised that his word will endure forever. And through that holy word keeps you true throughout your days of trial and trouble. 
protecting you and watching over you. And he has promised, be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Herman. We will now sing our sermon hymn, Praise to the Lord the Almighty.
us pray. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, maker of all things through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts. With them we offer to you our service and dedicate our lives to the care and redemption of all that you have made for the sake of him who gave himself for us. Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Maybe you. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Lord of all the saints, we praise you for evangelists and martyrs who sacrifice witness to your gospel across time and space. Inspire us by their courage to carry our faith to new people and places around us. Hear us, O God. Hear us, Lord of every place, the universe proclaims your greatness from generation to generation. Bless the work of all naturalists, conservationists, and park rangers who train our attention to the wonders of the world you have made. Hear us, O God. Lord of every nation, guide this country, red states and blue states, rural voters and urban voters, young and old, as we share in another national election. Kindle hearts equal to understand our common needs, to seek our common good. Hear us, O oh God. Mercy, On this next prayer, I'd like to start off um, with the first name. We're going to go ahead and add Paul's son, William. And Billy. And Billy. And Billy. Lord of mercy, every blessing, your son's blessing came to those living with poverty, grief, hunger, thirst, and prosecution. Shape our vision of the saints to match his own. Awake us in your call to serve all who suffer, especially Dwayne, William, William Classic, Carolyn Kirsten, Josh Sweeney, Evangelist Denise, Travis Cannon, Jerry Masper, Betty Gay. Curtis William, Helen Hoffman, Martha Swanson, Brad Schweitzer, Kathy Dickey, Andrew Hoffman, Cindy Rice, Trevor Hagen, Jimmy Herring, Dee Dee Mark Marcia Brown, Dennis Hyder, Lois J, Sully Apostles, Joe Lloyd, Claire Cassidy, Patricia Cantu, Walter Jackson, all members of our forces, all foster families, and all police officers and first responders. We lift all those who have not been named here, either aloud or in silence of our hearts. We also lift up all who are affected by the COVID-19 virus. May God's healing presence give them peace and hope in their time of need. For those who have experienced your unconditional love, we thank you, gracious God. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Lord of every venture, anoint us with the missionary spirit of the early church. Bless all the missions of your sin. Empower testimony from new communities of faith to shape and diverse witness to your saving power. Hear us, O God. Lord of every time, countless are the multitudes you have called by the name gathered to yourself. Comfort us as we grieve for those who have died in the past year. In faith, may we join with them in ceaseless praise. Hear us, O God. Amen. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until the day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, we remember with thanksgiving those who have loved and served you in your church on earth and who now rest from their labors. Keep us in fellowship with all your saints and bring us to the last of the joy of your heavenly kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. 
Filled with the Holy Spirit, go in peace. Serve the Lord and your neighbor.